Hey, math people, let's talk about volume. So area between curves, great. Area underneath curves, also cool. But what if we can borrow the third dimension and actually find volume? So I want to set this up this way. Uh, consider the line y is equal to x, cool. We can find the area of this from, say, 1 to 2. So x equal to 1 and x equal to 2. And we're going to use dotted lines for these. Yeah, there we go. Finding the area between this is great. We would just integrate it from 1 to 2. Uh, and it'd be the integral of x from 1 to 2, nothing too crazy. What if we want to rotate this around the x-axis, uh, which would allow us to come up with a volume? So for example, if I take this point right here, which is 1.687, and I spin it around the axis, I revolve it, uh, what I'm going to get is a cylinder. And that 1.687 actually ends up being my radius. Um, Problem is, though, is that this radius is ever-changing. So over here, this cylinder would have a radius of 1.912. And over here, well, it's 1.16. So how do we represent that ever-changing radius? We represent it as a function. So uh, let's start talking formulas here. So I'm going to pull out my brush. There it is. Uh, so th these are a lot of cylinders. When you spin it around the axis, you get a cylinder. So we need that formula. Volume of a cylinder, you end up getting pi r squared. Uh, cool. Uh, what next? Pi r squared h. Yeah, I know my middle school geometry. What up? Uh, this is great. Let's let's do this though. If we're gonna write this in a more calculusy way, my radius is ever changing, and my height is um, well not. The pi is a constant, and I don't have to touch that, so I'm just gonna plot this pi on down. So what about that r squared h? Uh, we're going to just represent this as our um, integral expression. Uh, my radius is actually the function. So with that said, that's what's going to be squared. So I'm going to integrate this, and I'm going to write my function, my f of x. And this is the expression that's, that is squared. And I'll tack on the dx at the end. Um, OK, so if we think about the height of this, uh, it's kind of an ever-changing cylinder on its side. Uh, it's going to be denoted through its bounds. So in this case, it's from 1 to 2. Uh, and we'll just call it generally from A to B. Uh, this in the business is known as a disk. So the volume for a disk is equal to pi. Uh, and then we integrate from A to B of f of x squared dx. Great. What if I wanted to amp this up and make it a little bit more fun? Uh, let's introduce y is equal to 1 half x. And uh, now we're talking a little bit more work here. If I wanted to find the volume of now this area, this area between curves uh, that's spun around the x-axis, uh, you actually get uh, an interesting shape because you have this hole on the inside here. So this in the business is known as a washer. What we need to do is we need to take the difference between uh, green line and red line. And uh, we have to creatively subtract off this hole on the bottom here. The way we do this is through the following formula. We say, well, the volume of a washer is pi, uh, but we want to take this larger radius, and we want it so from green to the axis of revolution, and we want to subtract off this smaller radius from red to the axis of revolution. Uh, so in this case, we're going to say, well, pi uh, multiplied by the integral from a to b. That doesn't change. That kind of serves as your height. Uh, we just want to do large radius. So from green to axis minus small radius, which is from red to axis. Um, and sometimes this is noted as like capital R squared minus little r squared and then dx. Um, but since we're using this uh, function notation, I'm just going to write it, I guess, in that same notation I've borrowed. I'll say f of x all squared uh, and then minus, we'll call red line g of x here. And then don't forget your dx. All right, so that's the formula for a washer. Great, that's the rundown. I'm going to be using these two formulas. So let's start our first one. OK, looking at the first one here, we have negative x squared plus 1. And y is equal to 0. We're revolving around the x-axis. So the axis of revolution, really important for problems like this. Uh, let's graph them. y is equal to negative x squared plus 1. All right, so i got to fix my window a bit. Cool, there we are. Uh, y is equal to 0. Well, all right. And we're uh, revolving around that axis, too. So let's consider this shape. We got this 
kind of mountain peak looking thing and we're revolving around the x-axis which is y is equal to zero uh, so you're gonna get this it, it's not quite a ball it's this here I'll, I'll do this I'll do y is equal to x square uh, minus one it's this shape but in the third dimension so I'm gonna erase this now though I don't need it anymore okay so how are we gonna do this so first off we identify if it's a washer or if it's a disk um, and we also identify if it's best to integrate this with respect to y or with respect to x. Um, given that these are solved for, for y and the bounds are quite easy to find, uh, this isn't too crazy of a problem. I'm absolutely integrating with respect to x, um, or well, with dx. And what next? Uh, we have to figure out if it's a washer or a disk. Uh, I don't notice any hole in between. I don't have like multiple curves at play where clearly there's some sort of gap in between our values. So. Uh, nothing too crazy here. It's just a disk, disc. and we're integrating uh, with respect to x here. So uh, let's set this up. It is the integral from, well, it's pi times the integral from a to b of f of x all squared dx. So pi still chilling up front. Uh, I have to figure out my bounds, so a little bit of work is required there. Uh, we would just set these equal to each other and Hopefully you can see that that's a pretty simple setup. We move the one on over, divide by the negative one, and we take the square root. Um, you get negative one and one. So those are gonna be our bounds of integration, negative one to one. Uh, the function here at play is that negative x square plus one. Square that whole thing, tack on a dx at the end, and there's your setup. Uh, what do we end up getting from this though? So if done correctly, you should get 16 over 15 pi. All right, looking at the next one, we have x is equal to negative y squared plus eight, x is equal to y squared, y is equal to negative two, and y is equal to one. We're revolving around the y-axis, so we're integrating with respect to y. Uh, keep that in mind as we're graphing this, and it should be pretty obvious once you see the graphs because they're isolated for x too. So we get x is equal to negative y squared plus eight. Uh, it's also equal to y squared and then here's y is equal to negative two, here's y is equal to one. And we're revolving around the y-axis, so uh, we're revolving around this guy right here. So it's gonna be this area. Oh man, that's pretty difficult. It's gonna be this area right here, and then it's spinning around the y-axis. Uh, that's gonna be a yikes for me. We gotta do a little bit of work here. So what I'm noticing is if we're, we're revolving around the y-axis, I have this little gap right here and right here, uh, which definitely leads me into thinking it's going to be a washer. So not only are we revolving around a vertical axis, which means we have to integrate with respect to y, it's also going to be a washer because we have this uh, large radius right here, so from the black parabola to my y-axis, and then uh, this small radius here from the blue parabola to the y-axis. So uh, yeah, this will be interesting. Let's throw down the washer formula. Uh, we're going to say, or yeah, washer formula, right? Volume of a washer is pi and then integral from a to b. We'll just say f of x squared minus g of x all squared dx. And sure, we're using a y here, but it's the same kind of philosophy uh, for both. So I'm going to say this is equal to, all right, well, for our problem, we have pi on the outside, sure. And we're integrating this. Um, with respect to y, so we're given y values now. Uh, looking at these points of intersection, um, they're not even relevant. I don't know why I'm looking at those points of intersection. I'm given the bounds actually straight up right here from negative two to one uh, because this is where I'm stopping. So checking out these y values, here I have a y value of negative two, here I have a y value of one. They were provided for us. So that's the nice part, at least in this problem, is that the bounds uh, were given to us. Where the heck's my cursor? Uh, in the problem, so from negative two to one. Uh, we have to figure out what f of x is, so it's um, when we're integrating with respect to y, it's gonna be right minus left, so my rightmost expression is the larger radius, in which case it's gonna be this black parabola, because we're revolving around this x, um, this y axis. So the black parabola is gonna be my large radius, or my f of x in this case. So that would be uh, negative y squared plus eight, all squared, 
and then minus the uh, left exp expression, the left uh, parabola. And that's going to be my small radius. This, this radius is much smaller than uh, this large radius right here. So in this case, my g of x is just y squared. So y squared. And then that's going to be squared. So at the end, we're going to tack on a dy, not a dx. So if integrating this uh, properly, you, end up, uh, you should end up getting uh, 144 pi. Uh, kind of makes sense. It's a volume first off, so keep that in mind when you're, we're looking at the smaller, smaller area. Uh, that's a that's a very large radius at the largest point. Uh, that's a radius of uh, eight. So yeah, it, it makes sense that we're getting a large uh, volume here. Uh, yeah. So what was this? This one. This was a washer, so it wasn't a disk, and we were integrating with respect to y, not x. So this kind of amped it up in two different. Uh, aspects. So it's great to revolve around x and y axis. You don't have to do too much thinking uh, when you're doing that. You do have to do a lot more thinking though when you're revolving around uh, say x is equal to negative 4 or y is equal to 6. So what if I shift my axis of revolution now? It's not going to be just on an axis and I have to do a little bit of thinking uh, with that said. So let's do the next one. Looking at the next one we have x is equal to the square root of y plus 2, x is equal to 2, and y is equal to 1. We're revolving around uh, x equal to 2, so we would call x equal to 2 our axis of revolution here. Yeah, it's not it's not going to be the y or x axis, so a little bit trickier. Let's graph this first. We get x is equal to the square root of y uh, plus 2. Uh, here is x is equal to 2, and here's y is equal to 1. Did I write this down right? Yeah, I did. We're good. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in on our little area. My axis that I'm revolving around is a vertical axis. It's x is equal to 2. Whenever you're revolving around a vertical axis, always uh, integrate with respect to y. Whenever you're revolving around a horizontal axis, always integrate with respect to x. So in this case, what should I integrate with respect to? Correct answer should be uh, with respect to uh, y here. So it's this little area and it's going to be spinning around 2. So if we want to see the other end of this Visually, uh, it'll be x is equal to negative square root y plus 2. Whoops, that's going to be on the outside. Yeah, so it'll be this, but in the third dimension, right? It'll kind of come out off the screen uh, in the middle here. Uh, right, so let's write this down. So first off, disk or washer, or second off, right? Uh, if we're looking at this, it's touching the axis of revolution. So since it's touching the axis and I don't see another curve that's kind of restricting it off, it's going to be a uh, disk. So we, we like the disk cases. Uh, so where it's going to be pi times the integral from a to b of just whatever your function is squared dx. Right, so let's start talking about this setup here. Uh, pi is still on the outside. Uh, bounds of integration, nothing too crazy. You can see they intersect on 2 comma 0 and 2 comma 1. So we're taking the y values because we're integrating with respect to y. So it'll be from 0 to 1. Uh, let's just say we didn't have this visually. Oh, that was supposed to be a 1. Let's just say we didn't have this visually. How would you figure these bounds out? Well, first off, one of the bounds is straight up given to you. It's this y is equal to 1. And the second bound, how would you figure out that 0? You would set this 2 equal to the square root of uh, y plus 2. Uh, and you would solve, and that's a pretty easy thing to solve for. You get zero there. All right. Um, yeah. So this is a this is a disk. Something to be wary of, though, when your axis of revolution is not an axis, uh, uh, one of the axes, the x-axis or the y-axis. Uh, if I were to integrate just the square root of y plus two from zero to one, it, it automatically finds the area up to the axis. What I would actually get is I would get this very long area right here. So it would you would get this uh, this rectangular piece on the inside. So that's what you would end up getting. So this, uh, we'll say, orange dashed line, this would actually end up being your um, one of your slices of your cylinders. So we don't want that. Uh, we're revolving around this red axis of revolution here. We don't want this whole piece right here. We only want this little piece. So with this said, our f of x here isn't just straight up the square root of y plus 2. Uh, it's uh, 
going to be a top minus bottom or right minus left kind of case. What we want to do is we want to find this top piece, which is the square root of y plus 2. And we want to subtract off every area, uh, everything to the left of this x is equal to 2. Uh, so we're going to subtract off x is equal to 2 right here. Uh, and in that process, I'm cutting off this entire portion. This entire cylinder is removed from the problem, and I'm just revolving this, uh, this little slice. So when I write this out, I'll show you what I mean, uh, it's, it's going to be treated as a right minus left to get uh, the square root of y plus 2. That's going to be my right minus left, which is just this x value of 2. And that serves as your f of x. That is what's going to be all squared dx. And what's nice is that, uh, or dy, and yeah, so dy, integrating with respect to y. Uh, what's nice about this problem in particular is that these twos actually end up canceling. So I'll just do one step of simplification here. We get uh, pi from 0 and then integrate from 0 to 1 of the square root of y all squared dy. Uh, you end up getting from this a number getting pi over 2, which is pretty pretty nice of a solution for something like this. Be careful. When your axis of revolution is not the x or y axis, you need to consider the fact that, well, there might be some area you don't want, so you want to remove it. And this is how you do that. Let's do another one. It'll be easier when we see it with respect to x, which is the, the last case. Before we go to the last one, though, just to clarify, this was a disk, and we integrated with respect to y. For our last one, we have y is equal to negative x squared plus 6, the line x plus 4, and then it gives us our uh, bounds of integration, presumably, we'll look at the graph, uh, x value of negative 2 to negative 1, and we're evolving around y is equal to 1, that's a horizontal line, which means we are integrating with respect to x. So uh, let's start by graphing these things. We get y is equal to negative x squared plus 6, so it's a parabola, I'll zoom out though. Here's my line. And here are going to be my bounds of integration. So x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to negative 1. We're evolving around y is equal to 1, too. So for that, we'll do a dashed line. Because there's, there's going to be a lot going on in this graph, as you can see. Uh, so wow, this is kind of crazy. Uh, what is the area we're looking at? Probably this weird shape right here. So this red curve is going to be the top. This blue line is going to be bottom. And then we have when well, we have our two. Uh, bounds of integration here, which is very, very clearly going to be from negative 2 to negative 1. So this problem was written such that they didn't want you to struggle with the bounds all too much. Uh, low key, they shouldn't have given you this negative 2. You should have solved, should have had to solve for that on your own, but whatever. Uh, so we're, we're revolving this guy around the uh, line y is equal to 1. So is it going to be, we, we know we're integrating with respect to x. It's going to be a disk or washer is the next question I'm asking. Uh, well, we want just this area, and I got this whole gap in, in between. So if I got a gap, it's going to be a washer. So uh, volume of a washer, we'll write this down one last time. Uh, that's going to be pi times the integral from a to b of that top function squared minus that bottom's function squared. dx. And this time around, we are integrating with respect to x, so... That'll make the problem a little bit easier. But the hard part of the problem is that, man, it's a washer and our axis of revolution is not an axis. So I got to be like really careful with this. Um, yeah. Let's start. Going to rewrite the pi. Bounds of integration, nothing crazy, already given as negative 2 to 1. Uh, negative 1, right? Yeah, negative 1. Oh, man. All right. So we want to find this uh, find this larger radius first. So from the red curve, so the parabola, all the way up to this line, um, I want this full radius. I don't want to include this part right here. So if I did just uh, negative x squared plus 6, I would get this whole length right here. I don't want that. I want it to stop on 1. So it's kind of like a top minus bottom kind of case. Uh, it's going to be negative x squared plus 6 and then minus 1. I don't want this additional part of the line. So when dealing with our f of x here, uh, top is negative x squared 
plus 6. And then bottom here is just the line 1. And this is going to be all squared. And then we're going to subtract off. Um, pretty much the same idea, but with the blue line. So top, in this case, will be the blue line. And then bottom, again, will be that, that uh, horizontal line axis of evolution, which is just 1. So I'm going to run out of space here. I can fit it. I'm ambitious. So we're going to have x plus 4. That's the top. And then minus 1. That will be the bottom. And then it's squared dx. Uh, so that is your setup. A little bit trickier now that pretty much everything's being thrown at you at the same time. It's a washer and the, the... It's not everything at once. I think the most difficult case is if you have a washer, you're revolving around a vertical axis uh, that isn't the y-axis. Uh, th those could together, I think, make up the hardest possible case. So what are we looking for when we're playing around with volume problems? Disk or washer with respect to x or with respect to y, and be very careful of your axis of revolution because there's some tricks there with that as well. Anyway, once you uh, throw this into a calculator, uh, we get a final answer of 83 over 15 pi. Yeah, it's good to me. I'm going to ask you to continue to math on. I will do the same. I'll see you in the next video.